No. Huh? Okay, I prefer to sit, but I will stand. Uh, the title of today is Made Innovation Made in Switzerland. The first innovation that was made in Switzerland <coughs> was to find out that Switzerland didn't exist. That was the biggest innovation of this country. When people suddenly realized, 100, 110 years ago, Switzerland does not exist. God, that was quite a decision. From that day on, Switzerland started to exist. How? By going outside Switzerland. Switzerland has to exist outside of Switzerland. Because in Switzerland, Switzerland cannot exist. There is no market. There is no population. There is nothing. There are no schools. If we would have schools in Switzerland, for the Swiss, we, had not, we would not have enough students. That's why all our schools are full of foreigners. Because of these foreigners, we can afford better professors, better research and development, and better schools. That's just one example. And the genius idea was to say, let's make Switzerland out of Switzerland. And how do you make Switzerland out of Switzerland? You make it by going to the export. And you establish yourself in the other countries with your banks, with your watch companies, with your pharma, with your bi biotech, and then you start to exist. And at the same time, you go outside Switzerland to establish your market, you bring foreigners into the country to make Switzerland grow. What a genius idea. Even today, uh, politicians in Europe have not understood it. Even today, people don't realize the genius of doing that. If you take America, are they, uh, uh, do they need to export? Do they need to be outside the world? No. They have 220 million people. They have a huge market. So America has believed for many, many years that America would exist in America. And so they went outside, not by adapting themselves to the export. They were going outside by bringing their model, which they had in America, to foreign countries. And that's why they are very poor exporters. Because they never adapt. Look, cars. For years, they have imported cars to Europe that were not meant for Europe. Taking too much uh, uh, petrol, 20, 25 liters, you know. Of course, gas was free of charge in America, but here it was expensive. Uh, cars that are so big, uh, and so on. So they never could adapt that. So innovation, the first country that innovated fundamentally was Switzerland, because Switzerland invented Switzerland. I mean, phenomena. These people, the Swiss people, are absolutely genius people. They invented a new way to govern. Today, the Swiss government, the politician uh, uh, way it is structured, are getting, it's, it's an example for Europe, not later than this morning I heard, that 100 French citizens asked if they cannot adapt in France a political system that takes some elements from the Swiss political system. So that innovation in Switzerland, you are all very lucky to live in this country, to study here, because you study in the middle of creativity. You study in the middle of innovation. And innovation and creativity is something that is in the air. You smell it in Switzerland. You get it in your lungs. And you have to take it and breathe it and take it in your lungs and go back home with the genius creativity of the Swiss. They invented how to make coffee to the, um, to the Italians. And they said, Espresso? No, it is named Nespresso. 
And the whole world says now Nespresso. If you ask for an espresso, people look at you, what do you want? So they invented coffee. I mean, can you believe that? I, thanks God I'm not Italian. I would be ashamed that the Swiss people who make chocolate invent a new way of drinking coffee and to make, to drink a coffee an experience. What a genius invention to take a product and to change it and now it's Nespresso is Swiss and <laughs> Nestle has become the biggest producer of coffee. It's unbelievable. And you have the same everywhere. You have the same in the biotech. Look at the farmers, Novartis, Roche, and so on. You have the same in the machine industry. You have the same in the watch industry. In the watch industry, it's even worse. It's worse because we have eliminated everybody. Not one watch can be sold in the world if it's not, made, if it's not written Swiss made. Only cheap watches can be sold with non-Swiss made. But a normal watch, a respectable watch, cannot be sold if it's not written Swiss made. What a genius. Uh, we have a stronger monopoly than Microsoft. We have stronger monopoly than any company. We have a national monopoly. No one can produce a watch that is not written Swiss made on it. And that's it. So you see how phenomenal you are in the country of innovation, of creativity. <laughs> Plus, you are in a country of productivity. Swiss people work. French people, they work 35 hours a day, a week. I wanted to say a day, it's so little. 35 hours a week. Seven days, 35 hours. I had 25 Chinese customers today, not customers, individuals. I mean, when I told them about the 35 hours of the French, they couldn't believe it. Uh, so <clears throat> the Swiss people work 42 hours a week. My people said to me, if you want some help, Mr. Beaver, we are ready to work 44 hours to compensate the Swiss price. I said, no, not for the moment. We don't need. I will come back if we need. But just to get the proposition of people to say, we want you to help. We want you to give. Uh, we want uh, to give you some help. We are ready to work two hours more, free of charge. That shows a certain character. That shows that is also creativity. The workers become creative in order to help the boss, because they rely on the boss. If Hublot is doing well, they will be doing well. So they know the two hours they're going to offer me, they will get it back. Uh, so creativity made in Switzerland, <laughs> you could simplify it and say, uh, Switzerland, creative country. And it's a creative country. There are a few elements in creativity which I want to give you. I have always, since I was a student, I have always been different from the others. I was so often punished by teachers and by my parents because I never wanted to be like others. I was of the impression that if I look uh, and, and if I act like everybody, then I would not be different. And I wanted always to be different. I don't know why. That's my character to be different. And you know, if you look at a river, in a river there is a stream. Who swims with the stream? Dead fish. <laughs> a fish that is alive never swims with the stream. Swims against the stream, or right or left. But dead fish, and I never wanted to be a dead fish. And because I never wanted to be a dead fish, I say, how can I be not a dead fish? And I said, Beaver son, you must look different. So I had long hairs. I was uh, in May 68. I made a strike, uh, yes, in my school. <laughs> then they were not happy, the teachers. Because in Switzerland, normally you cannot strike. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I did a strike uh, in 68. 
and so on. So <clears throat> when I became a little bit older, I said, I still want to be different. So I made a company, and I said, this company must be different. But not only different, that's not enough. I must be unique, and I must be the first. So any project, if I can be the first, different and unique, I have a winner. Finished. It was as simple as that. Always, I say to my people, even today, I'm 62 years old, I, say, I still say today to my people, guys, we must be always the first and different and unique. Whatever project you come to me, please, I want to be the first, different, and unique. If you come with me to a project where we would not be the first, but we would be different and unique, eventually it could, it could work. If you come with a project to me where we are not the first and not unique, but we are different, okay, let's study it. But if you come to me with a project where you are the first, different, and unique, you have a winner. It's the full hand like of a poker. We're going to do it. So that is one of, our, of my rule of behavior. What does it give you if you have a permanent obsession to be different, unique, and the first? It gives you creativity in your head. If you drink a coffee and you don't think how can I make this cup of coffee different? Different in size, different in color, different in material, different in use. Then your creativity will never come out of you. Creativity cannot be only guided. It's an attitude. So I say to my people, you were in the restaurant. Did you ask yourself how the fork could be different? Uh, no, Mr. Beaver, we ate. I said, but you forgot. You must always, as an obsession, whatever you see, whatever you touch, take it and enjoy it, but immediately ask yourself, how could this fork or cup of coffee be different? How could I change the use of it eventually? What other materials could I use? What other functions could I give to it? And you will never find the solution. Who cares? It's just the attitude always, build. think about it. Think, how can it be different? And when you get used to it, then suddenly, every day you ask yourself 100 times, how can it be different? How can it be used differently? What other solutions would exist? And then your creativity will come. And it come, if it creativity comes once a week, it's enough. It's always enormous. If it comes once a month, it's enough. Most people are never creative. But creativity is an art of thinking. It's a way of behavior. It's an attitude, a mental attitude. If you never ask the question, you're dead. You will be like the dead fish. And you will follow the stream. Okay, but that's not what you want for your future. You want to cut on the contrary. And if you have this attitude, one day you enter a business, this attitude of asking yourself will be in your head, and immediately you will ask questions. And you will enter the new office, and you have already five questions. How could I make this different? How could I change the boss? And so on. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's brilliant. You will be brilliant. So the best advice I can give you, take this attitude and never take something for granted. Everything that is here, I tell you, from the cup of coffee to the car, nothing is granted. Everything can be changed. Everything can be seen differently. Everything can have another use. And you must always play in your head and say, hey, how could I make it different? And don't worry if you don't find the solution. That's normal. 
because you are not a specialist of the cup of coffees. But because you play with your brain, the brain will have a kind of reflex in French, uh, automat automatic thinking. And when the automatic thinking is coming, then you will be automatically creative. There's another element you must never forget. The failure is your friend. My wife never agreed for my kids. But I always said, let them do the same year twice. Because if you give to my children two times more what other children are doing in one year, he does it in two. So it's fantastic. He has more time. And <laughs> he will know better. And then if three years later he needs again one more year, give him one more year. The, he, where, where, where should he be in a hurry? And if he finish at the university, if he's 24, 22, or 26, who cares? Life is so long. <laughs> you never care. And the more he studies, the more he enjoys, the more he gets equilibrium, the more he gets harmony. The failure is my friend. Every failure brings you closer to the next success. So in school, people, teachers, are teaching you that the failure is bad. You will not succeed if you don't work. Uh, so what? I will do it again. And I stay for one more year. <laughs> it's not. And it will never be a problem. One minute left? OK. Uh, <laughs> she tells me this because uh, I'm in the watch business. <laughs> so <laughs> no, don't forget, failures are your friends. And the more you do mistakes when you are young, the less mistakes you need to do when you are older. <laughs> and the mistake done when you are young is not important. A mistake done when you are 63 like me, that's already maybe a problem. So <laughs> the mistakes, the experiences, the failures must be done now when you are young. And they are all assets. So every failure, every uh, échec, misfortune, this is are all your assets. And take them with positive attitude. OK, now she says zero. I'm finished. Thank you very much. All the best. <laughs>